Oh Lord, as we continue through Lent on our walk with you to the cross, help us to see beyond death to life with you. Amen. <clears throat> Today is Rose Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent. Last week we were in the messy middle, but now we've turned the corner. After being in the darkness of Lent for three weeks, the church gives us a chance to lighten up just a little bit. Purple is the liturgical color for Lent. Purple is not a primary color. It's a color that's made up of blue and red together. Blue is a symbol of depression, sadness, darkness. So if you take that away and you add the light of Christ, you have this rose color. It's a lighter, more cheerful color for today. So as we lighten the mood for today, our reading is about snakes. <laughs> and we're not talking about little green garden snakes or even black, harmless black, though still scary snakes. No, no, these are fiery, poisonous snakes. And they're biting the Hebrew people and they're dying from these snake bites. And this is the lesson that God and Cal gave to me for today. <laughs> Thank you, Cal. <laughs> but you know, Cal didn't know this, but God did know this. This is a lesson that I need. See, I grew up in a very snaky place. There were railroad tracks ran right in front of our house. And to the left, there was a spur line that arced to the left of the house. So on two sides of the house, there were railroad tracks. And along the railroad tracks were weedy, brushy undergrowth. And between our house on the tracks to the left and our house, there was a lumber yard. And this attracted mice and birds and other critters that like to live in those weeds and in the lumber piles. And of course, these are all conditions that attract snakes. And yes, there's also conditions that attract little boys who were looking for a place to play. So I had a lot of snake encounters as a child. And that gave me a very unhealthy fear of snakes, which continues to today. I try to stay away from snakes. I don't even like to look at snakes. But snakes can teach us a lot about faith. And faith brings salvation. <clears throat> the Hebrew people had a snake problem. And they came to Moses and they begged him to ask God to take the snakes away. Isn't that always our reaction to a problem? We ask God to just take the problem away. We don't want to deal with it. Just take it away, Lord. Make it disappear so we don't have to face it. But God had a different idea. Because, you know, God always has a better idea. 
God knew that the snakes were the immediate problem, but the snakes were just the result of the real problem. The real problem was the people's lack of faith. The people had lost their faith that God was going to get them to their goal in the way that they thought was the best. They were impatient with God. So when the people asked Moses to take the snakes away, God instead instructed Moses to make a representation of this problem, a symbol of what it was they feared, and have the people look at it. They had to face it to be saved from the death that the problem caused. When we have those problems, those iniquities, those transgressions, you know, the ones that are keeping us awake at night, the ones that are causing difficulties in our relationships, or causing us to question our abilities. God's telling us that we have to look at it so we can see what the real problem is. The real problem is a lack of faith that God is in control and he will take care of us. God did not take the snakes away from the people like they asked. The snakes continued to bite the people. But God gave them salvation instead of death. Life instead of death. Their faith in this salvation is what kept the people alive. God will walk with us if we will walk with God. Life in this world is full of snakes. God gave us this world with all of its snakes. And this is the world we have to walk through. But if we know where the snakes are, and we look at them, then we know which way to turn to get away from them. And that's what repentance is. If we say we want to repent, but we have to know what it is we're repenting or turning away from without knowing the transgressions that are killing us, without facing and looking at them, we can't know which way to turn to get away from them. We'd just be aimlessly turning in the other direction, maybe as bad or even worse than where we were. On Ash Wednesday, we were invited to a Holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial. Self-examination comes before repentance. Self-examination and then repentance. Self-awareness is necessary to achieve an effective salvation. The Hebrew people were given life and salvation when they found a renewed faith and looked at what they feared most, death. We have this cross, the symbol of death. But when we look at it through eyes of faith, we're able to see beyond death to the true life. We are made alive and saved from that fear of death by renewed faith. And you he made alive when you were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world. 
Those are the opening words of today's reading from Ephesians. And here is Paul at his best. And he lays out his theology that once we repent of our trespasses and sins, we who believe and follow Christ exist in a different world, a world of the Spirit. We are made alive in this spirit world when we leave behind the death that rules this world of the flesh. This world may corrupt by the prince of the power of the air, by the evil brought by Satan. Paul goes on to say that our repentance, by our turning from the trespasses that were killing us, God made us alive with Christ, raised us up with Christ, made us sit with Christ. These are acts that God has already completed. The work has already been done. This is not something we have to wait for. We're already there. This was accomplished by Jesus when he went to the cross. We still walk through this world with all its snakes, but it's also a world filled with beauty. We can still feel the love in this world. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus tells us that his purpose in coming to us as human was not to condemn us, but to save us. This is all a gift from God. Our faith makes it possible. Our faith that God is in control and that God will walk through us through the hard times. Last month, my wife Terry and I made a trip to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Our condo was right on the beach. And every morning as I did my devotions, I looked out the window in front of me. In the darkness, I could hear the waves pounding the shore. As daylight started to break forth, I could see the writhing water and the waves rushing in and out. See, out there, there was chaos, turmoil, violence, crashing all around. But above, There was light, peaceful, delicate colors, and they were growing brighter as the dawn overtook the darkness. I was blessed to see creation happening every morning as God's light, the light of Christ, came to bring peace over the chaos. The chaos was still there. The waves continued just as they always had. But I just had to look up. And there was peace and light. The snakes are always going to be there. <clears throat> But we need to look up and have faith that God's salvation will get us through. And I think that's what the lighter tone of Rose Sunday is all about. We are still in Lent. We still must walk with Jesus to the cross. We need to continue in prayer fasting, 
and self-denial and reading and meditating on God's holy word. But today, let's look up and see the light of Christ and know that we are already made alive with Christ.